Hi, everyone. I'm Michael Horowitz. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Seal Storage Technology. It's great to be here today. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about commercialization of Web3 technology, kind of a foreign topic for some. Um, lots of talk uh, in technology hype cycles of the potential of blockchain technology and what it could deliver in the future. And I just want to tell you a little bit of the history on Seal and why we became so inspired uh, to build this company. Essentially, where we like to live as co-founders is really our DNA is about the intersection of real commercial use cases and public blockchain or open source networks. So it was a perfect fit when we discovered Filecoin, but we endeavored to really do some deeper research and try to discover whether or not Filecoin was the clear leader in decentralized storage. And after many months of research, I think we spent about six months in total, uh, we decided that it had emerged in our minds as the clear leader and we saw the verifiability and the immutability of this technology as highly disruptive to the massive data storage market. So again, a perfect fit, commercialization, massive disruption, that's where we want to be. So uh, next step for us was to really um, decide how we could become the best in class as technology operators in the space. So we set forth with six months of research, searching the globe for the best in class architect in the space. And we found our CTO, Jacques Swanpoel. How did we find him? Jacques was um, one of the top echelon performers at Space Race. Maybe some of you are familiar with Space Race, probably a lot of you. Um, Jacques was a top echelon performer, and we began a conversation with him on the back of that type of performance. And subsequent to that, uh, maybe some of you know that Protocol Labs asked Jacques to present a YouTube stream, which has since, I think, achieved about 30,000 views, which doesn't sound very viral to people who are kind of generalists in, in other sectors, but the fact of the matter is there's only 4,000 miners today on the, uh, in, on the Filecoin network. And as such, um, we would consider Jacques as kind of one of the thought leaders uh, with most of the folks turning to Jacques, uh, to Jacques' video before launching of the network. So the next phase was to, to develop giant scale. So what we've done is uh, we've built a very massive footprint of data storage in North America. We have already 22 petabytes of data storage available in North America. And for those of you that don't speak petabyte language, that's about the equivalent of 400 Netflix libraries. So needless to say, we have a lot of data storage available and plan to scale aggressively. And so today we're going to talk about how the verifiability and immutability has actually gained significant traction in the marketplace. And we're going to give you tangible evidence of how this is resonating and gaining traction. So again, we're not talking about the potential of the technology. We're going to tell you about a real sizable institution today, and there will be many more to come with future announcements where we'll talk about how, how this traction continues to accelerate. I just wanted to do a quick um, overview of the, of the storage sector, broadly speaking. For those of you who don't know a lot about the storage sector, it's an incredibly large sector. It's about $80 billion in size today, and most folks forecasters are predicting a 24% 24, 24 compound annual growth rate. So you're looking at a $360 billion market in about, you know, call it less than 10 years. That's a massive market and a massive tailwind for a new disruptive technology to gain a lot of share. Fascinating data point uh, for some of you on storage also is that the rate at which it's accelerating is, is, is pretty incredible, given the fact that in the last two years alone, 90% of all data on this planet has been created. So just stop and think about how robust this sector is. And you know, I want to leave you guys with a thought before I pass it on to my co-founder and COO, Alex Altman, that this is a very seminal moment for the technology because you're witnessing today really what will be a, a moment when everybody will realize that the Filecoin network is the most commercial open source protocol out there. So I'll turn it over to our COO, Alex Altman, to take it from here and talk to you more about commercialization. Thank you. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, so as Michael said early in the presentation, at Seal Storage, we've been extremely focused on the commercialization of decentralized storage in Web3, particularly in the archival data space. Right now, from a global data perspective, about 60% of all data is considered to be in archival, and that number is expected to grow to 80% by 2024. What a lot of people don't know is the vast majority of that archival data is actually stored on magnetic tape, picture like a enhanced VCR. There's a lot of different issues with that. It's extremely legacy technology. We just keep improving because it's cheaper. But the reality is there's significant problems that surround 
the potential degradation of data, the verifiability of that data if it's lost on the tape, as well as the expense and the time consumed to actually get that data off magnetic tape. Decentralized storage fixes a lot of those issues. And we've been working with a lot of innovators and early adopters in the space to actually get in the trenches and see what exactly would it take for an enterprise, an institution, one of these big companies to take a look at the software and integrate it into their existing technology stack. You know, people are generally against change, particularly when things are working, even if they're not working particularly well. So understanding where these barriers are and how they could be removed has been the utmost important to us in actually bringing in more institutions, particularly on the scientific and research side of things. We've seen that in order to actually get this data on, we've had to develop a number of different core middleware technologies like APIs to actually connect to existing Web2 solutions to bring over data in an efficient and quick manner. We've also seen that encryption has been extremely important to all these different groups because everybody cares about what happens to their data. They don't want to get lost, they don't want to get, get damaged, they don't want the wrong people to see it. So we've set up an encryption, an encryption system that's been okayed by a number of different institutions that I think would pass even the most stringent security officers. We've also focused a lot on data reliability and retrievability. Looking at the magnetic tape space, which again is the dominant technology for archival storage, it can take up to 30 days for a customer to actually get their data back. And when they get that data, they're not 100% certain that that's the data they put on there because they may have done it a few years ago and the tape may have had to been changed over over time. So decentralized storage addresses a lot of those issues by having the storage being verified every single day as well as associated with the network so it's never taken off onto a physical item. So we at SEAL have been really focused on how can we make these companies and institutions get the benefits of Web3, the chain of custody, knowing where their data's been, who's touched their data, the verifiability of the data that we have to prove every single day that it hasn't been touched, the same data that's been there, and the immutability of data without actually having to get down and dirty and develop their own solutions in Web3. And that's what we've been focusing on. And, and finally, we've developed a global network of other decentralized storage providers who we've vetted and seen that can perform at an enterprise level to make sure that we can get the appropriate geographical, geographic dispersion so that these types of companies can access their data quickly no matter where they are, but also that they know that the data that's there is the same that everybody else in the institution is accessing. So we're really excited today. For the last couple of months, we at SEAL have been working with UC Berkeley at their Neutrino uh, Research Department on bringing decentralized storage over to the university and to helping them out with, the, with uh, storing their various experiments. We believe that in order for these experiments to be greatly enhanced, you need to have a secure and uh, retrievable storage system. So with that, I would like to bring up uh, Dr. Tanner. <laughs> Dr. Tanner, come on up. <laughs> um, yeah, came, came all the way from California here to talk a little bit about the research that you guys are doing, as well as your experience so far with uh, Web3. Yeah, thank you very much, Alex. Um, yeah, so a little bit about, I think. <laughs> A little, about, a little bit about myself since it's, uh, yeah, I'm not in this industry. Um, yeah, I did, I did my uh, undergrad at UC Berkeley in physics before doing my PhD at the University of Pennsylvania uh, in physics, and I'm now, here, maybe I can go to the next slide. This one. Uh, before, um, I'm now, a, yeah, I finished my uh, PhD recently at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm now a postdoctoral researcher at UC Berkeley um, and Lawrence Berkeley National Lab working in Dr. Arebi Gan's group um, in experimental particle physics, um, primarily looking at these particles called neutrinos. Um, so a little background on our research. Uh, neutrinos are these fascinating particles uh, that come from various terrestrial and astrophysical sources that interact very weakly with matter. In fact, there's billions of them streaming through your body right now. Um, and we build enormous detectors, often deep underground in old mining caverns in order to detect them. Um, we also use these detectors to detect things like dark matter. Um, and an example of one of those detectors is shown here. Um, so with these detectors, we instrument them such that they produce enormous data sets, often many petabytes per year. Um, and we need a re reliable and safe place to store that data. And that's really where our partnership has started with SEAL. Oh, thanks. Uh, yeah, so a little bit more on the demand for data from, from our side. Um, we're currently building a detector at UC Berkeley. Um, this detector is 
being constructed and will be finished within the next couple of years. And it will produce something like several petabytes of data per year. But that's really just the tip of the iceberg in terms of the data storage need for these type of projects. Um, there's an international project called Dune right now, a multi-billion dollar experiment being built in the US that will produce something like 30 petabytes per year. And then there's many of these neutrino and dark matter experiments being built right now across all of which you might expect something like hundreds of petabytes a year. Thank you. So yeah, for us, in terms of the benefits for this uh, Web3 decentralized storage, um, Alex has already touched on a lot of these things, but uh, the immutability is very important for us. Um, to give a sense of that, a lot of the um, searches we do are what we call rare event searches, where while we're continuously taking data, there are... Um, instances, very rare interactions on our detector that we hope to capture. So that means that across our full data set, we might only really care about one or two or a couple of the files. So every single file is extremely valuable for us because it might contain that very rare interaction. Um, then, as mentioned, the ge geographic decentralization will hopefully mean that the universities that we collaborate with, which are international universities around the world, will have easy access to the data that we're taking. The verifiability, of course, is very important to us. Um, the research data that we use is um, you know, integral to the science that we're doing. So knowing that that data uh, is not corrupted or changed in any way is uh, extremely important. And then lastly, of course, is the affordability. Um, we, these detectors that we're building are very expensive. And so any money that we can save on the file storage side means we can build bigger and better neutrino detectors, which is ultimately really our goal. Um, yeah, and with that, uh, thanks everyone, and thanks for the invitation to speak, and pass it back to Alex. Thank you very much, Dr. Kaptanalu. Um, so here, in terms of where we are, uh, this is generally what you see from a technology adoption curve. I think we've now passed the innovator stage and we're working in the early adoption phase, which I would say is one of the most critical phases of the entire adoption curve because in between the early adopters and the early majorities is the technology chasm, which means in order for our experimental technology to get to a global scale and become a, a globalized technology, we actually have to cross the credibility gap, which means that companies have to understand this technology and they have to take more than just our word for it because we're you know, very much involved in the technology, they need outside third parties to come and say, I've looked at this technology, we appreciate the benefits of this technology, and this is the way that has helped us and bring these different institutions here. So that's where we are right now, and that coupled with the various different products and, and services that we've created at SEAL to make it really easy for these groups to come in and play around in the Web3 ecosystem and experiment with little to no recourse, and they can actually see and experience the benefits and solve a lot of their internal issues is the utmost importance in actually being able to move onto the next stage and, and globalize this technology. Um, so we're very excited to have uh, Berkeley join the ecosystem here and uh, be, uh, be ready for some more announcements over the next couple months. Thanks everybody for coming. Thanks again, uh, Dr. Tanner, for coming out. And uh, we appreciate it.